Here we have an Asus laptop that came in for no power. Laptop is not powering on. However, you do see an orange light on the laptop. So there is a sign of life on the laptop, but the laptop is not powering on. Nothing is heating up on the board. Big Boss already inspected the board under a thermal camera and the board looks clean. No heat spots anywhere. And I told them to disassemble the board so we can look and see what's going on. And I have the board right in front of me, right here. All right, let's go under the microscope. And we're gonna start with the DC connector. I do not believe we have a short on the power MOSFETs because we are getting an orange light on the laptop. Get my probes, meter in diode mode. And we're gonna check. So the power connector, DC connector is here and we have two MOSFETs right next door. And I'm interested in the drain on this MOSFET and we are reading 0 0.42 voltage drop. That's good. That's perfect. So we know that voltage is getting in. And while at it, and since we are next to the V-Core MOSFETs, why not measure them? We are in the same diode mode. And let's do this. 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0 0.4. We're good. We're good. We do not have a low reading or short on any one of those pins. <laughs> and just a quick visual inspection in this area, we see nothing obvious. I mean, any problem on those caps would have affected the MOSFETs, but right now everything is measuring good. Let's check under this shield here. And I do not have a reason to believe that we have any issues here. But while at it, why not measure the gate here? And measure the gate here. Everything looks good. We're going over this quickly and moving along. Let's measure the gate on this right MOSFET here, 0 0.45. And while at it, why not measure between gate and source, 1.2. And then if we do this, oh, I'm reading it short. What if we measure between gate and source? I'm also reading it short. Let me go to ohms mode, measure from here to here, 2 ohms, that's very low, 2 ohms is a problem. What if we measure from ground to gate, I'm reading 17 ohms, whoa, so we have an issue here. It could be the MOSFET itself or probably something on back of the board. Look at this, is that a cracked chip? What's this? Hmm. We could have a problem with the MOSFET or a problem with this chip. Either one of them. Whoa, that was quick. And that's why sometimes people ask, why do you skip measuring voltages on a lot of the components on the board? And sometimes you have to be practical, especially when you have a business, you have to be practical and you have to base your measurements or your decision based on experience. I've worked on a similar issue before. I know the problem could be this, remove, change. You have to be practical. If you are a person who maintain a pool, water in the pool, maybe the water is not balanced, pH is too high. You could be one of those people who grabs a pen, formulas, formulas, formulas to figure out how much acid you need to add to the pool to make it perfectly balanced. Or just grab half a gallon of acid, drop it in the pool, and pH will go to normal. Which one are you? Being practical is a lot more efficient than being technical. 
a lot of times you see me remove components, replace components, and a lot of times, I would say 80% of the times, I'm successful. And sometimes replacing a component does not fix the issue. But I'll take the 85% with the efficiency rather than being too technical and measure every voltage rail on the board and not be efficient. And we have a lot of devices in the queue. Things are piling up. I'd rather be efficient. Yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. Fix, invoice the customer. No fix, repair attempt, ship it back. Somebody else want to spend more time on it, by all means, they can spend more time on it and they may be able to fix it. And that's why here in the shop, because we have so many devices in the queue, we have to decide what should we spend time on and what should we not spend time on. If something is making us a lot of money, but it's going to take time to work on, we will devote and dedicate our time trying to fix the board. If something costs $100 and the person is trying to fix it, it doesn't make sense to spend any time on it because that same amount of time that it takes to fix that $100 device, we could be fixing a lot more devices and getting paid more money. It's not all about the money, but this is a business. You have to be smart on what devices to work on, what devices not to work on, which device is going to take a lot of your time, which device will not take a lot of your time. So we have to make quick decisions. And decisions, they come based on experience working on similar devices, like this one here. We noticed a short on the gate of this MOSFET right away, without doing anything. I flipped the board. Because from experience, I know this MOSFET here is linked with the chip that we just found on the back. So immediately I flipped the board and we saw what looks like a crack on the chip without measuring anything. And I just lost the chip. Where is it? Right here. Right here. It looks like a crack to me. So let's see. Before I remove the chip, I want to see if we can locate one from a donor board so we can quickly swap and see if that will fix the problem. Right now, what we can do is we can remove the chip and then we can measure to see if we still have a short or low resistance on the gate of the MOSFET. Yes. Yalla, yalla, coming. Just a second. All right, so let's continue. So now the problem could be this chip that looks like it may have a crack on it, but we cannot be sure. I'm not sure if that's a crack or not. Or we could have a problem with the MOSFET that we see here. Right now, gate is almost shorting with source. Right now, we did not measure anything on the board except for measuring MOSFETs and looking for a possible short. We do not have any circuit diagrams open, and I'm not even sure if we can get circuit diagrams for this board, but we never use circuit diagrams unless we really have to, and we have to have the circuit diagram along with the board diagram. Circuit diagram alone is not enough because the circuit diagram will tell you how the circuit work, how it works, but it will not tell you where that component is on the board, and if this component is connecting with this one, with that one, with this one, it does not tell you that. We need the board view diagram in order to get this information. And we almost always never use circuit diagrams or board diagrams. It would be nice if we have it. But right now, everything is based on practicality and previous experience working on laptops. So why don't we go ahead and desolder this chip? And then we can measure the MOSFET again and see if we still have low resistance on gate or source to gate. Let's put it on the side. And let's see, flip the board. We're gonna go here and measure. Meter in resistance mode. And what happens if we measure right over here? And look at that, I'm getting 4.3 ohms. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, 4.3 mega ohms. I'm not gonna laugh for 4.3 ohms. I'm reading 4.3 mega ohms. <laughs> not 4.3 ohms, okay? So let's do this one more time. We're gonna measure from the gate 
of the MOSFET all the way to the charging connector, and I'm actually reading one mega ohm. Okay, 4.3 was a little high, but it's still adjusting. 1.7, 2.1. If I was reading 400K, I'm okay with it, okay? It's reading in the mega ohms, and that's perfect. And now if we measure from gate to source, so we are getting a reading in the mega ohms. What do you think? Practicality. We did not measure anything. We did not open up any board diagrams. We did not go over every single component and every single rail on the board. And that's how I'm able to go over 15, 20 devices a day. If I want to spend two, three hours working on a single device because I want to measure everything on the board, we're not going to finish. We won't finish. Where was... Now, I'm looking at a donor board, trying to see if we can locate the same component. The component may not have the same reading, but I want to look and see if the layout is the same, okay? Let's go over to the microscope. Right now, pin number one is on the bottom left. Horizontal dash right here. So I want to adjust the donor board chip. And I think we may have one right over here. This one? Yeah, this one. So if you look here, pin number one is going here. Evia. Pin number two, Evia. Pin number three, a resistor. Pin number four, Evia. Pin number five, some capacitor. And if we look on this side, one, two, three, four, four is going to, to a capacitor. Let's take a look at our donor board. Okay, so we do have pin number three going to a resistor, a one ohm resistor, same as here. And pin number five is going to a cap, like here. And then on the bottom, pin number three is going to a resistor, like here possibly an inductor, and then a resistor, one ohm. So it looks like we have the same chip. Three. Then we have, yeah, so we're going to assume that we have the same chip, even though the numbering on the chip is different. But to me, it looks like the same chip. One, two, one, two. It's connecting to a cap, connecting to a cap. Four. Or number two is going to a Sanvia. And then you have one. I'm going to say that that's exactly the same chip. Let's desolder. And we're going to go over to the customer's board. Right here. If anybody knows the model number of the chip that we took off. You can leave it down in the comments. And if somebody can look this up also, leave it down in the comments. Hey, a lot of beginners, they wonder, what happens to that solder blob in the middle? Wouldn't that short out? The pins when you solder the chip? The answer is no. That's what flux is for. Solder is going to push out. And pins are not going to bridge. Because any excess solder will just push out. And that's the job of the flux. That's what flux does. If you try to solder the chip on without flux, then yes, you're going to get a lot of bridges. You see now how we have this pin bridged with that pin? This here. Just keep watching, you see? You see how it separated itself? So let's go ahead and solder the chip. We're gonna align it as best as possible and look at how the center blob pushed out. Look at the pins. If you feel like you need more flux, flux is your friend. Do not cheap out on flux. And some people in the comments, some beginners in the comment, they say if you push down on the chip a lot, it's going to bridge. No, it's not. You want to press down on it. You want to make sure all the pins are making a good connection. 
I'm gonna press down with my tweezers. Push down, and the job is done. Right, the job is done with the blob on the right. Perfect, very nice. Better than factory. Now we can go over the sides here to just get rid of that blob. Nice and easy. And we are done. And do not confuse a glare for a blob, okay? Pins are not bridging. QFN soldering. It's not difficult, but it does take practice. Let's see if we can zoom in. All right, so we have one, two, three, four, five pins. One, two, three, four, five. And so beginners do not start to hallucinate and think that we have ridges. I'm trying to clear out any glare. One, two, three, four, five. And one, two, three, four, five. Okay, very nice. And pin number one is on the bottom. Nice and clear. Now let's go back, flip the board. And we're gonna measure this MOSFET one more time. Diode mode. And let's go, let's measure right over here. And we have 0 0.6 reading, that's perfect. And we're gonna measure between gate and source. And we have 0 0.6 reading. So the problem is not the MOSFET, but the problem was the chip on back of the board. We used experience and practicality. No circuit diagrams, no board diagrams, no measuring, no voltage rails. None of that stuff that will waste your time. And we got it. Hopefully it works. I should not be too optimistic because it could or may not work. Who knows? We're not psychics. But I have a good feeling that this will work. I'm going to give it to Big Boss to read some on test and I'll be back to finish the video. Big Boss is done with the reassembly of the laptop. Almost done. Yes, no, maybe. Do we see the red light still on the front? Where is it? Yes. Yes? Yeah. Yes, yes. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Practicality. Laptop's fixed. How long did it take? A few minutes. Wow. Big boss is the man, like always. Always the boss of all bosses. Thank you, big boss. Thank, Thank you, you for reassembling and for giving me the good news. Viewers will be happy. All right, so we're done. Laptop is fixed. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, leave a comment if you have any questions, let me know what you think, and we'll do something else in the next video.